So a friend of mine gave me a bunch of these brass reducers, and I'm going to melt down some of them today. And for this video, I'm going to be using my indoor electric furnace because it's raining outside and I can't use my outdoor propane furnace. So I'm going to load this crucible up and stick it inside the furnace and get this thing started. And just so you know, it does take about a half an hour to get this brass melted down. So my friend who gave me the brass also asked me if I could use the brass to make two of these crosses. In today's video, we're only going to be making one of them. The second one I'll be making next week using my outdoor propane furnace. So in this video, I did not include the process of making the sand mold using the wooden pattern. But I did take some pictures. Using this wooden pattern was quite extensive and it would have been a long video if I included the sand casting process. After packing the sand around the cross, I had to carve out half of the sand surrounding the cross because the cross doesn't have any draft angle to it. If you're new to my channel, I've had some mishaps surrounding my casting area. So recently I started surrounding it with dry sand just in case I spilled some molten metal on the table. With the furnace at 875 degrees, it's time to check on the metal. And it's red hot at the bottom, but it's still not melted down. About 10 minutes later, the furnace is now 1,060 degrees Celsius and the brass has melted down. I'm now going to add some more brass to the furnace and wait another half an hour before pouring the molten metal. It's now been about a half an hour and it's time to pour the brass into the sand mold. Because I still have more brass in the crucible, I'm now going to pour the remainder of it into a graphite ingot mold. And now it's time to see how the cast came out. This is the first time I'm trying to make a replica of this wooden cross. And from this angle, it looks like it came out perfect. Now that the sand is removed from the casting flask, I'm going to chip away at this sand and try to uncover the brass. Now unfortunately there was some shrinkage on the top side of this cross. This happens all the time when molten metal solidifies. So next time I'm going to add a feeder that's going to help reduce the shrinkage from the top of the brass. Now it's time to put this in the vise and cut off the runners and clean it up. So here are a few things that I use to clean the brass up. And the first thing would be this Vivor belt sander. I use this to really sand away the sharp edges from the outside of the brass. I use my Ryobi drill with a sanding disc and some files and lastly this Brasso brass cleaner. And this is now the completed product, this nice shiny cross. And yes, I even polished the backside that has the shrinkage. And it still looks really good. I now have a perfect replica of this wooden cross. I hope they like it. 